Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will very quickly show you how you can monitor the connectivity status in your Android app. So as you can see in my emulator we have um, our connectivity status text here that says available because we are connected to the internet. As you can see we have Wi-Fi enabled and we have mobile data enabled. But as soon as we for example switch to flight mode that will switch to lost because we just lost connection. If we then toggle this on again, like or rather off, you, uh, you see it's available. And also if we launch this app and it's unavailable, like if we launch it in airplane mode, then it will directly say it's unavailable. And there's also a, um, a fourth state, which is losing. So if the user is currently losing uh, their connection, then it will display losing until it's finally lost. Um, I, it's just hard to show you that now here in the emulator. And I will not only show you in theory how you can implement this, but also how you can implement it in a nice way so you can easily observe the status lifecycle aware, or at least, yeah, with some kind of lifecycle that you can choose in the end. One little thing with this approach is that this only works from API level 24 upwards, so that's why we need to set this as the minimum SDK in built at Gradle app. So we simply min SDK 24, synchronize now, and then we can close this again. And we go to our root package where we want to create an interface called connectivity observer because that's what it is. I just like to put that behind of an uh, abstraction here so we can also easily test components that uh, make use of this connectivity observer without actually needing to provide an actual uh, implementation of that that monitors the actual network uh, status. And the way I want to implement this here is I want to have a function called observe. And what this function will return is a flow of type status. And that is a class or rather an enum that I will implement here. So this function will basically just give us a flow and this flow will emit a value in form of a connectivity status every time that value changes. So we can create an enum class in here, status. And here we just list all of the possible study, study, statuses, statuses. <laughs> um, and that is available that is unavailable, uh, losing and lost. So those are the four statuses <laughs> that we have. Now that is also recognized here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to implement the implementation of that, which I will call network connectivity observer uh, like this. And that will only need an instance of our application context. So we can pass the context here and it will implement our connectivity observer interface. Here we of course then need to implement this observe function. And now how will this work? How do we actually get these, um, these values in form of like connectivity statuses from the Android system? And for that we have something called the connectivity manager, which is a system service. So we can use our context to um, get a reference to this connectivity manager and that's equal to uh, context.get system service context dot um, what is it connectivity service and we say as connectivity manager so that's basically just um, yeah a system service of the Android system we can get a reference of that by using our context and with that we can actually get a callback that will trigger in yeah all of these different events. So when the network becomes available, unavailable and so on. And what we will now do is we will take this callback, this connectivity manager will provide and kind of convert it to a flow. And since we deal with a callback and we want to convert it to a flow, what we'll use is simply called a callback flow. So we can say return callback flow in which we can simply send values whenever a specific callback function is triggered. So what we can do here is we can say val callback is equal to object colon, um, how's it called? Connectivity manager dot network callback like this. And we can press control I or actually control O rather to implement some of these functions. And we don't need all of these. So you can see we also have on capabilities changed on link properties changed and on block status changed. We don't need this. We are only interested in these four functions here on available, on losing, on loss and on unavailable, which are of course the functions that are triggered when the network is in that current state. 
In unavailable, what we want to do is we want to say launch, since to send kind of or to, to emit an event in this callback flow, we need to be in a coroutine which we currently aren't in that callback block. So we can simply say launch, send, and here we want to send our available event. And we also get some warnings. We can simply press Alt Enter here and add this experimental coroutines API to our network connectivity observer class. We can then copy this line and simply paste it for all the other callback functions here and just change the status of that here to losing, here to lost, and here to unavailable. Cool, so now we have this callback, but right now we don't really assign this callback. So we don't tell our connectivity manager, hey, that's our callback and please call the corresponding functions of that callback when the connectivity is in these corresponding states. So what we want to do is we want to go below this callback, we want to say connectivity manager that register network callback, or is it default callback? Yes, this one here, register default network callback and we pass our callback. And what we then want to do is we want to say await close, which will simply suspend, as you can see, this callback flow until, yeah, basically the coroutine scope it was launched in is actually cancelled. So if we launch this in view model scope, for example, then await close will be called as soon as the user actually navigates away by simply popping the back stick or so, because then the view model scope would also be cancelled. So then await close is called and in this block we can actually clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up. For example, we can unregister this callback again. So we can say connectivity manager, unregister network callback and we pass our callback here. So that way we don't need to really worry about this um, kind of unregistering and registering this callback because that all will be handled by the coroutine scope we actually kind of uh, that we use to actually collect this flow. Now you can see we get a big error here because we need a permission. If we um, hover over this, you can see we need this access network state permission, which you can simply add here. And what we could also do is we could say dot distinct until change, which will simply make sure that um, if we have two emissions of the same type um, that come one after, uh, one after another, uh, then this won't trigger. So this will really only trigger if there is a change in status. So now we can take this connectivity observer interface or rather this implementation and go to our activity. Normally I would probably do this in a view model and then you do some something with that connectivity state. So for example to yeah, maybe show some specific sections of your app or don't show them. Um, but since I, yeah, if we would do that in a view model, then we would need some view model factories on Dagger Hill to actually inject this instance with the context. So I'll just do this in the activity here just for a quick demo. Um, we will have a private late init variable for the connectivity observer, which we can then simply initialize here. That is our network connectivity observer where we pass our application context. And then here, uh, since we're using Compose, I will also show you a way how you can collect that flow without Compose. But let me quickly start with Compose. We're just going to implement a little box here so we can center our text, fill max size. We say content alignment is center. And then in here, we are just going to have a text that displays network status colon, um, and here we actually need our state, uh, which we don't have yet because now we actually need to get that flow from our network connectivity observer and transform that to a compose state so we can actually show changes on, in our UI. And there's a very cool function to actually convert that. We can simply say val status by, uh, what is it, connectivity observer dot observe dot collect as state. We need to provide an initial state, which I will choose unavailable for, import this, and there we go. So now this will be changed whenever our status actually changed, um, since we yeah, call this observe function, which kind of transforms the callback now into our compose state, like at first into a flow, and we convert this flow into our compose state. So then we can simply pass this status here, and that's it. If we now launch this, take a look here, it's launching, you can see it's unavailable because 
I launched this in airplane mode. If we turn this off, you can see it's available. <clears throat> if we now turn this on again, it says lost. And again, since we use a callback flow and we essentially um, convert this callback flow using collect as state, I'm not sure which specific coroutine scope collect as state uses. Uh, I think it uses uh, some kind of launched effect block behind the scenes. Um, so that would mean that it would also stop observing when um, this composable here would leave the composition. So if the user kind of navigates to a new screen or minimizes the app or so, then we would stop observing these connectivity statuses um, since then a wait close would be called and we would unregister this network callback. So we really don't need to worry about this stuff by converting um, the callback to our flow here. And as promised, let's just quickly also go through how we could um, collect these values in a non-composed app. That would simply be done here. Um, you would simply say connectivity observer observe, which will return the flow. You can then do something with each emission. For example, print line status is it. And then you could say you launch this flow in lifecycle scope, for example. Or you could use your very own scope with your very own uh, kind of lifecycle or so. Maybe if you want to stop observing when the user just minimized the app, which like in this case, it would continue observing because lifecycle scope is cleared when the activity is destroyed, which it isn't when the user just minimizes it. But you could write your own scope with your own lifecycle and cancel the coroutines when you want to cancel it and then pass it here. And then you would also properly trigger these, um, this unregistered network callback when your custom scope is actually cleared. So I hope that helps you to actually monitor your network status in your Android app. So you can also yeah, make sure to only show specific sections of your app. If the user is actually properly connected to the internet, one thing to mention here is that um, this can fully recognize if the user um, if the user basically has the connection active, so maybe has enabled Wi-Fi, but actually does not have Wi-Fi. So sometimes your router is broken or so your, or your router just doesn't have um, a connection to the internet. But since the router would still send something, the phone would assume the user is connected to the internet. But actually there is no data coming in. And this approach can't really detect that because yeah, in the end, the only way to detect that would be to send some kind of ping to a server. And after X amount of seconds, not being an answer, you would kind of assume that there is no internet connection. So in the end, it's really hard to detect that kind of not being connected or imagine you're in a train and then you drive through a long tunnel where you where suddenly your mobile data drops but sometimes you're still connected and it doesn't say you you don't have um, connectivity but still no data would be coming in and then this approach would also not properly work in that regard so if this video helped you let me know that down below if you have any wishes for future videos let me know that down below as well i wish you an amazing rest of the week enjoy your day and see you back in the next video bye bye